psychological continuity. The right to preserve personal identity and the coherence of the individual's behavior from unconsented modification, even if the modification is not harmful per se. The reasoning behind this, the mind is the last refuge of personal freedom and self-determination. Your body can be subjected to any number of hostile actions or come under the control by others. Our mind, however, they could never get to. So along with our thoughts, beliefs, and convictions are to a large extent beyond external constraint. With advances in neural monitoring and neural engineering, brain imaging and pervasive neural technology, the mind might no longer be such unassailable fortress. As I will explain, emerging neural technologies have the potential to allow access to at least some components of mental information. I will tell you right now the extent that these things can invade your mind is incredible. Totally unbelievable. What must be understood is they have access to your thoughts. They have access to your dignity. They have access to your honor. They have access to you without your consent. These so-called advances can be greatly beneficial for individuals and society. They can be misused and create unprecedented threats to the freedom of the mind and to the individual's capacity to freely govern their behavior. A good example of this is China. In China, if you are caught smoking a cigarette in the wrong area, you will get your first black mark on your social standing or your social index. If you get a second black mark, you will not be able to purchase an automobile. You will not be able to purchase real estate. Your family will be disallowed from certain luxuries that others have. If you get a third black mark, Okay, folks, we are going to commercial. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, Frank, I'd like to say we need to stop this torture to murder program because it is extremely painful and they're not letting me sleep. But this is exactly how you're explaining it. This is exactly the way our government is treating us. Yes. And I don't know how they're able to do it. Yeah. Unfortunately, you're correct. And they skate around medical breakthroughs, which I don't deny are wonderful. Uh, they skate around future cop. So you can be driving down the street right now, but soon, and they'll pull you over because... They say it looks like that you could commit murder and they will put you in jail. Go ahead. Yeah, um, and Tom Cruise was in a movie about that. But the thing is, is that those that are torturing us to murder us are doing that right now. And they don't see themselves as anything but elite, but they're not elite. They're assholes. Thank you very now, much. Now, government is part of it. Yep. Yes. Yep. Thank you. And, uh, okay, do you have any additional comments, Catherine? Well, no. Um, thank, uh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and I hope you enjoy listening because this particular episode together with probably two more are going to be one wild ride. I will tell you okay. that. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. In, in view of the time that we have, I'm going to get right back to this. I don't know whether anyone realizes it. But there is a new type of brain imaging. It's fMRI. Functioning MRI. That's what the F stands for. So we've come a long way with imaging. It's come a long way with so many things very quickly, like a stampede. But the laws that govern our human rights have not followed suit because these technologies, for the most part, are top secret. Now, they are just starting to be betrayed by the commercial industries. And we'll get into that. Inside clinical applications, as I said, we are getting significant improvement in the well-being of patients that are suffering from debilitating neurological diseases or disorders outside the clinics. Commercial applications are providing new and different possibilities for cognitive enhancement, personalized communication, and entertainment for the couch potato. A major interest in this further augmentation of our technology is the legal domain, especially tort law, criminal law, and law enforcement. So, our attorneys 
are taking a very hard look at this. And I am sure that if you talk to somebody like John Rutherford, okay, we have to go to the commercial once again. relevance 
in the coming decades. And I have already mentioned them, but I can do that again. It's the right to cognitive liberty, the right to mental privacy, the right to mental integrity, and the right to psychological continuity. Very logical. Very easy. It's up to our legislators to use the proper legal language so that not one perpetrator will slip away through the cracks from these new laws. For quite some time, the very boundaries of the skull have been generally considered the separation line between the observable and unobservable. This dimension of the living human being. There have been primitive forms of neurosurgery used in ancient societies, including pseudoscientific procedures such as trepanation, which is actually boring a hole into your head. And, and this allowed the, uh, the observation and even manipulation and selective removal of brain tissue, yet the neural and mental processes run in the brain and underlying emotions, reasoning, and behavior remained unobservable. The early scientists, ancient scientists, thought they could just look inside and see what was going on. But naturally, that could not happen. In contrast, these modern advancements in neurotechnology have started to unlock the human brain. There are insights into brain processes as well as their link to respectively mental states and observable behavior. As far back as 1878, the scientist Richard Canton discovered the transmission of electrical signals through an animal's brain. Forty-six years later, the first human electroencephalograph was recorded. Since then, a neurotechnological revolution has taken place inside and outside the clinics. And thank God that some of it has taken place outside the clinics and in the commercial world where it is showing up everywhere. In the 90s, sometimes we refer to this as the decade of the brain, the use of imaging techniques for neurobehavioral studies. These studies increased dramatically. Today, as a wide and rapidly expanding spectrum of neuroimaging technologies has become clinically and commercially available, the non-invasive recording and display of patterns of brain activity off 
often associated with the completion of physical or cognitive tasks has become standard practice. So the medical industry has become the father of the military machine or at least its use of its information. DARPA brags about being able to give vets a new lease on life that has been severely injured in war. And that is a, a wonderful thing. But at the same time, it was in the guises of creating a computer brain or AI. They want to develop a hive that houses everyone's brain in terms of inert function, memories, facts, and the like. In addition, derivatives of the EEG technique, such as evoked potentials. Now, evoked potentials can be defined as watching an oscilloscope. When you see a peak, that is an evoked potential, something that is happening. In addition, EPs in event-related potentials, ERP, allowed to average EEG responses to the presentation and processing of stimuli. So we're getting into an area here where they're getting down to what my dad would call brass tacks. Another technique, which I've already mentioned, functional magnetic resonance imaging. Now, this is, as I said, something that is totally brand new. This allows to measure brain's electrical activity indirectly by using hemodynamic responses or cerebral blood flow as markers or indirect markers. Now this is called lowercase f capital M capital R capital I. Now, fMRI techniques can localize brain activity, graphically display patterns of brain activation, and determine their intensity by color coding the strength of activation. fMRI techniques are implemented for a variety of purposes, including pre-surgery risk factors assessment, and functional mapping of brain areas to detect abnormalities. And an example is hemispherical, left-right hemispherical asymmetry in language and memory regions. In addition, a number of neurological conditions, including depression, and Alzheimer's disease can now be diagnosed with the use of fMRI. But I'm going to drop ahead just a little bit, and I'm going to tell you that this fMRI is what they are going to use to scan someone for future
culture club. Now, what they're not telling you is the delivery method, the infamous delivery method. Right here, we can see it. It's an MRI machine, a functional MRI machine. The capacity of these machines and their techniques to map brain functioning has been tested effective also in gaining insights into people's intentions, views, and attitudes. Scientists were able to infer from decoded brain activity which actions participants in their trial were intending to perform. The task in question was to decide whether to add or subtract two numbers and to covertly hold their intention for a few seconds. During that delay, it was possible for scientists to determine with 70% accuracy. Now, that's yes, because I'll tell you it's 100% accuracy. Which of two tasks the subjects were covertly intending to perform? In another study, they toured several virtual reality homes and then had their brains scanned while touring another selection. By IDing certain patterns of the brain for each house, they were able to determine which houses their subjects had been to before. Now, this is actually a further enhancement because with remote neural monitoring, V2K and the maladies that we have had for years, you have to enter into the equation habits. Every day they follow your habits. Humans are a creature of habit. And the perps use this against Okay, folks, we once again have to go to commercial. Thank you for listening. We have been discussing neuroscience and new human rights issues on TM Radio. Tomorrow evening, we will be doing the same. Since we are just about out of time, I'm going to run down our basic ads and info. Our newsletter is free, and you can receive a copy by writing frank at targetedmassachusetts.org. In the subject line, type newsletter. Or you can visit our site at targetedmassachusetts.org. And in the navigation, go to contact information. Please fill in your name, email address, cell phone number, and a short message. Or you can call me in the U.S. at 1-508-857-8334. Call into the station and ask a question at 800-313-9443. Or listen at 605-313-0111. Targeted Massachusetts Northeast Conference airs Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 9 p.m. Eastern. By phone, 
9715. Access code 708922. ID targeted. If you'd like to join us by computer, in your address bar, type join dot free conference call dot com forward slash targeted. Our YouTube channel is Targeted Massachusetts. Targeted Justice is hosting a rally and protest event in our nation's capital. This is taking place October the 18th through the 22nd. The registration fee is $35 and includes a free t-shirt. We encourage you to request a five-minute audience with your congressman. You will need to make a request several weeks in advance. Make the request through your congressman's website and ask for an appointment October the 21st or the 22nd. In New York, we have a conference call for TI support. This occurs every Saturday evening at 8 p.m. Eastern. By phone, 605 Okay, folks, we have to say good night. Um, God bless and good night from Boston, Massachusetts. My name is Frank Allen.